Super Sport, Super Sport, Super Sport. They are back, and so many of them. Stay tuned. <laughs> Yeah, they are back and let's start right off with the Aprilia 457. This bike has 48 horsepower and offers everything the law permits. With these beautiful aesthetics, you can see that the Aprilia heart beats strong in this one. And the data sheet shows us that this bike is perfect for every beginner and everybody that has the A2 license in Europe. We have a aluminium frame, a TFT dash, different riding modes, ride by wire. You have ABS that can be turned off. You have monoblock radial brakes, a real dream for every beginner. Man, I wish I was a beginner. I almost wish I was a beginner again, I have to say. This bike will be offered in three color schemes and as you can see, it is heavily inspired by its bigger sisters. And the bike has been developed by professionals. So, so fun is absolutely guaranteed. Let's move on to Zontes stand. Sadly, this is only a prototype. I personally have tried different Zontes scooters and they were pretty great, actually, They're pretty great. Uh, this remains a prototype, at least for now. Uh, we have a 700cc inline triple with about 110 horsepower. This bike will be produced the next year and uh, as you can already see, we have a beautiful swing arm, general, a very, very beautiful bike, it's nothing to say. We have a quick shifter and I really, really can't wait to try this bike and to see it in its final form. 40 years of Kawasaki Ninja. Here you have the special color scheme, absolutely stunning there. And here you can see the ZX4RR. In Europe, or at least in some countries in Europe, only the 4RR will be imported with its adjustable suspension. Man, this bike is such a throwback. A four-cylinder 400cc bike with 77 horsepower without ram air effect and 80 horsepower with and around about 40 Newton meters of torque you will hit the limiter at 16,000 RPM. That is insane. You have a quick shifter with blipper, absolutely phenomenal for a 400cc bike. And it's, it's just absolutely stunning and so unique. There is no bike in the world right now you could compare this with and have a fair comparison. This bike will cost just under 10,000 euros, which in my opinion is a very fair price for a bike with everything you basically need on the road and on track. It is a sports bike, as you can see, but it is definitely also a bike you can have fun with in the twisties. In Germany, you will have a cup tournament with the ZX4RR, and where you can also ride the old ZX 400 RR, so the 90s um, model, which that, that, that will be so much fun. I can't wait to see that cup race. The bike is a perfect compromise between a road and a super sport bike. You have a much more comfortable riding position and a slipper clutch. However, there will not be an A2 version, at least an official one by Kawasaki, but um, third parties will probably offer ways to restrict the bike so you can ride it in Europe with your A2 license. Let's move on to the ZX6RR with its 636cc. These 36cc, as most of you know, really do make the difference. 
you have 69 newton meters of torque and a fantastic acceleration when leaving those hairpin turns. You have many new elements, uh, many new components, um, of which also the new headlight, which you can also see in the new Hybrid Ninja, but also the fairings and the quick shifter without blipper though, that is sad. However, there will be third parties that offer a blipper system you can retrofit on your bike. The suspension is awesome as you would expect from a bike in this category with an aluminium swing arm. Uh, this bike has most of the electronics that exist. However, there's no IMU and no blipper, so that's the only two things missing. Obviously, you have a TFT screen uh, with 4.3 inches, um, if I'm not mistaken, with great connectivity. It is a stunning bike in this color scheme, in my opinion, and the uh, turning lights are integrated into the mirrors. I think that probably on the road, but also on track, many people will be happier with the 636 than with the 1000. Thank you very much, Andy, and let's move on. Is it hot in here or is it this Ducati? Here you have it, the new Panigale V4 SP2, 30th anniversary, 916. This model will be limited to 500 units with this special color scheme and with its special options. This bike will be an homage to Carl Fogarty, who won the World Championship in 1999, reaching a milestone for Ducati. The engine is still the 1103cc engine with 215.5 horsepower and 124 newton meters of torque. It distinguishes itself from the others thanks to its bandiera tricolore, which is the Italian national flag, the laurel reef and the silver logo of the 916. This bike has been made to be ridden by a single rider, so no bringing your partner, but I guess that's okay. You have a fuel cap in carbon fiber, you have winglets in carbon fiber, you have wheels in carbon fiber, you have a fender in carbon fiber, and a heat shield in alu, no, I was kidding, in obviously carbon fiber. You have special wheels, those are not the usual carbon fiber wheels, these are special carbon fiber wheels that weigh 1.6 kilos less. You have Stilema Air Brembo brakes with the Brembo MCS master cylinder, a dry clutch by SDM Evo and adjustable pegs, foot pegs in CNC. There is absolutely everything on this bike. Among the options, you will have a cover for your lights, for your license plate and for your mirrors, as well as a carbon fiber clutch cover for those who want to slowly, slowly lose their hearing. But it would be a good way to lose your hearing. As well as oh, the Ducati uh, data processing tool, I think it's called. Let's move on to the fire blade. Fire blade. <laughs> Ever since the 90s, I'm in love with the fire blade. And from 97 on, I have ridden them all. And I have to say, it is incredible how beautiful a motorcycle can be. It is such a powerful motorcycle as well. So much horsepower is such a sporty bike. And now for 2024, we will have many news. We have the new aesthetics. We have new aerodynamics. All of the electronics have been upgraded. A weight savings of 800 grams, which is not, which is, which is not negligible for a super sports bike. The maximum torque and the maximum power at lower RPMs, and by lower I mean 500 RPMs lower, so at 14,000 and not at 14,500 RPMs. 
the 217 horsepower remain the same. The bike will have two servo motors and a throttle by wire, an upgraded one. If you rapidly go off the throttle, you will have more engine braking um, in comparison with a slow release of the throttle, which will bring about way less engine braking. Now you will also have the racing ABS and it is the first bike which comes out of the factory with the new Showa electronics suspension 3.0 more intelligent this thing than us two together. You tell the bike or the suspension your weight and the bike does the rest. So therefore guys don't lie to the bike. Be honest. Also the new foot pegs are in a different position. You can tell instantly as well as the clip-ons. The old position was way more radical. This here is very different. I have to say very different. CBR 600 double R. I have always loved the underseat exhaust and now you can see this huge swing arm adjustable suspension not electronically though and now this bike has all the electronics that you can find on the 1000 on the fireblade the bike still has 121 horsepower and you simply feel at ease on this bike obviously this bike uh, conforms to the new euro 5 plus uh, rulings and it weighs 193 kilos wet. With this bike, I am sure you can have a lot of fun. You can have so much fun uh, with this bike on the road. What an incredible bike. At the beginning, I was, I was not a real fan of the uh, winglets. However, now I, I think they look pretty cool, I have to say. Oh, there we have the CBR650R. Uh, from an aesthetic point of view, Beautiful, beautiful. It looks almost like a baby fire blade. Obviously, it doesn't have a nearly as much power as as the fire blade or as the 600. But still, what what do we have? What do we have here? What's new? In Europe, the CBR 650R is the most sold super sports bike. So now we have an update of its aesthetics, a new TFT dash, a five inch TFT dash, and all of the updates that you can find on the CB650R. On top of that, you can choose to opt for the new E-Clutch, the new generation of the DCT, they call it, which has a servo motor which engages the clutch uh, whenever necessary. You will still be able to shift yourself. The, the, the clutch lever will uh, remain. The engine will still be a six speed with a quick shifter and blipper. So you basically never have to shift manually again. Neither when starting from a red light nor when um, shifting up or down. Obviously, like I said, you can still choose to shift yourself by engaging the clutch yourself. You turn off the system and you can shift normally. Moto Morini, let's go, let's go. Moto Morini with a new project for 2025. Corsaro was a naked bike and a pirate. This, however, is the Corsaro Sport planned for 2025. This bike has a 750cc V-twin with 96 horsepower. It has a beautiful exhaust system. Also, the lights, the, the headlights are uh, very good looking, in my opinion. Now, I haven't sat on it yet. I can see from the design of the tank that the riding position will be very comfortable as well as the knee angle and position. Sadly, we don't yet know the price of the bike. Let's move on to Suzuki. Suzuki, 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 I think you say in Japanese. Um, GSX 8R. The GSX 8R is based on the GSX 8S, who would have thought, which was revealed last year 
and sold uh, throughout the year. It is a very fun bike, uh, so it makes a lot of sense that Suzuki has opted to produce a fared version of that naked bike. In my opinion, that was a very good step to take. The GSX 8S has won many, many bike comparisons in 2023 and was a huge success all over the globe. Uh, so now they chose to offer us a, a, a more sporty looking fared version of that bike with a sportier riding position as well as sportier handlebars. You have small changes to the GSX 8S. Like I said, the handlebars and the fairings, very obvious, but also the Showa front suspension, the fork. The exhaust, however, is the same as the GSX 8S. Personally, I'm not a fan of these huge luggage systems on these bikes. However, these small and soft bags are really good looking and easily removable as well as the passenger foot pegs. Um, so they, they get a green light from me. You can see different accessories on this bike. You can also choose to buy a darker windshield, which however you cannot see here. The bike will be uh, available from January, February, I think, and the bike will cost 9,700 euros in Europe, 9,400 US dollars and 8,900 UK pounds. With all of the options that you get from the factory that uh, the GSX 8S had, so the quick shifter and the blipper, obviously, and all that good stuff, you will have many models ready to be sold from January and February, so there will be no uh, shortages in bikes. The bike is pretty slim and the knee angle is very comfortable. The handlebars are a bit more aggressive when compared to the 8S, but nothing uh, exaggerated. So for me, pretty perfect. Yamaha XSR 900 GP. Finally, I can see it live at EGMA. Fantastic. Yamaha gave us a real renaissance of the 80s with this fabulous XSR 900 GP. The new XSR 900 was already a stunning bike. I really liked it a lot, but the GP version makes my heart race. Now, tell me... Tell me a little bit about it. What did they think in Yamaha when uh, building or when drawing this new version of the XSR with these perfect modern brakes and the quick shifter as well as the TFT screen? You can see that the bike is generally very modern with, however, pretty old school styling. Who took the decision? Was it easy or was it difficult? Well, in reality, it was pretty easy. Our CEO has a very strong uh, passion for racing. Uh, we are very happy. Also because the model, um, this version I mean, has found very good feedback since the first day. Young, young people, older people, everybody reacted very well to this bike. We have, no, we have new user buttons uh, with a joystick, uh, which will be the next generation of interface usage. And the dash can obviously be connected to your smartphone. Great connectivity. The engine is still the same, a three-cylinder CP3 that you can also find in the MT-09 with 119 horsepower. You have a great uh, quick shifter with blipper function and on this version you can also see the Akrapovich exhaust which is pretty important in my opinion to complete the 80s uh, aesthetics together with the lower fairing which I think is a must. You have a pretty sporty riding position on this bike, but nothing exaggerated. The clip-on bars are a bit lower, but they're not extremely low. And on the road, you will probably, not probably, you will surely have a very fun bike, which will be 
um, available starting from April and there will be no shortages. Let's move on to Pooj. Pooj, ever since 1964, do they produce racing components. Back in the days, they were mostly fairings. Maybe some of you still remember Angel Nieto, who won the 125cc uh, World Championship 13 times. <laughs> and he raced with many Pooj components. Nowadays, you can see mostly fairings and winglets and other plastics. You can see here a very, very extraordinary concept bike, the Diablo. We have already seen it last year. Uh, it features automatically adjustable winglets um, depending on your speed. And in my opinion, in the future, you will see them on many bikes. One bike that already has them is the Moto Guzzi Mandello. However, they, will, they are not used on the Mandello to improve the um, aerodynamics, but to offer a better protection from the wind. Whenever you speak of Pooj, you also immediately speak of power. Those are two synonyms that are very deeply interlinked. So, let's go Pooj! Guys, we made it. We made it to the end. We made it. So many, so many new super sport bikes at ECMA 2023. It was fantastic. Please let me know in the comments which bike you found most beautiful, which bike you didn't find uh, any liking in at all. And as usual, please subscribe to the channel. And see you guys. See you guys next time. Goodbye.